Ugu, are you ready? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so it is my pleasure to introduce your, our second our second speaker of this of this uh, this conference, Ugu Brando Vega, my good friend, also member of the Lisbon Academy of Science, as well as uh, Professor Onikov is also a foreign member of the Portuguese Academy of Science. So, Ugu, please yes. speak on fully developed space-time periodic viscous flows. You have okay. to. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, first of all, my best regards to all participants and my best wishes to Professor Solonikov. Uh, and also congratulations to Professor Giga for the deep results they have just uh, shown us. I must say that unfortunately, I am not able to follow the meeting due to very strong familiar reasons. In fact, many, many, some months ago, my three sisters, bought tickets to come to visit me here in this period in uh, from Lisbon. And they are now waiting me in Florence and uh, uh, today and tomorrow. And I have to be there, this is uh, clearly. And uh, since I have to escape after uh, at lunchtime. Uh, okay. I, I had the honor of meeting the uh, outstanding mathematic, mathematician uh, Sevrod Solonikov in the 80s. This, I must say that this honor immediately turned into the pleasure of better knowing my friend Seva, his sympathy, humanity, and generosity. Forgive my bad English, please. Our personal acquaintance began in the 80s when I was professor in Trento. Since then, we have met a lot of times. Due to limited time available, I decided just to remark, to remember three uh, impressive visits to St. Petersburg. Impressive, uh, not for, also for a mathematical point of view, but I, I choose impressive for a personal point of view. Uh, since some among the many that I did in this fantastic city, that I really love this city. Uh, I am enthusiastic about St. Petersburg. First occasion was maybe my first visit to St. Petersburg. I don't remember. My memory is <laughs> very good. Uh, visit St. Petersburg in, uh, when Olga Ladizhenska hosted me and my wife at her house. I have then frequented the legendary Fontanka 27 when I met again several, several, several times. This was really, I, I, I remind so this Fontanka 27, this institute, old institute for me is something incredibly fantastic. Yes, I, I, it's a monument of mathematics. Another occasion was related to an invitation uh, to give a conference at the Steklov, having uh, at that time Seva hosted me, my wife and my daughter, on the west quarters of the Oil Institute, a visit full of unforgettable remembering. Another very impressive occasion was when Seva invited me to stay overnight in his house to have the opportunity to go together during the night to enjoy an incredible event the famous open the door bridges to let large ships go in and out. This was something uh, incredible. Uh, okay. Uh, dear Seba, let me take this opportunity to express my admiration for you and for your outstanding mathematical contributions. Let me say in Italian, mio carissimo amico, ti invio da Pisa un forte abbraccio e tanti auguri. Uh, Okay, now just I start with my 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 presentation. Say following the this uh, uh, this uh, thing you have written in, in front of you. Okay, I start by by as usual to start by a photo, and I start. I must say that that uh, uh, Jose Francisco. Uh, I I don't know. Is I I I I I thank the organizers. Many thanks to the organizers for the invitation. Clearly, like, I don't remember if I didn't do it. I do it the second time. Is okay. Uh, uh, I must say that uh, Jose Francisco sent me yesterday a very nice photo, but I don't show it because the photo be belongs to him, hence I, I don't show it. I will, since we are talking about anniversaries, I show a photo which connected with uh, just 10 years ago when I turned uh, 70 years. I am just 10 years less than, than, than Seva. And why, when I turned this, at, uh, I, I show this photo. Let me do this, I am able to do that, it appears. You see, uh, Seva here was 
uh, in the in the in the scientific committee and also in the in the um, in the the name in the edit is one of the editors of the the proceedings in an American Mathematical Society series. I don't remember what it was, what it was. And uh, okay, this is just to show is to show a photo. Now I go inside mathematics. I will start for a, a quite a little long thing, but uh, uh, or let me do it. Okay, the problem is the following. Assume we have a supply of water. I, I, I think I will not arrive at the end because, because of time, but I will try. Uh, uh, we have a supply of water variable according to a daily time time, say. And we, we have this. Clearly, you have a faucet here and we open and close it here more or less. Clearly, during the day, during the 24 hours, the, uh, 24 hours, you give more, more, more water at, uh, at uh, more water at 12 in the day that at midnight and so on. And this is always the same each day, periodic in time, but change with the hour, with the time table. Okay. And the problem is uh, the time periodic, okay, is well known, etc. We know the total flux is easier to measure total flux, but we don't know what happens, what happens here. We, you see the, 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 the arrow, it is, we can see the arrow here. No. Are, you, uh, are, we, see, are we hearing me? Zé Francisco? I, I don't hear you. Are you hearing me? Le yes, ah. we hear you. Ah, you hear me, okay. Yes, we see the arrow. Ah, you see the arrow, this is important. Yes, it's important. Yes, many thanks for your contribution. And, uh, okay. And the time periodic total flux is well known and easier to measure, but we don't know what happens here with the flux, flux here, it changes a lot and we don't know what happens here. And this have not practical, very big practical interest, but at, but at long distances, we presume, and it happens, that the flow tends to forget the pointwise distribution of velocity at the entrance here, at, at, at long distance, at long distance, it forget this, and merely remembers the total flux, tending to become pointwisely t periodic. At the end, it times to be pointwisely, really pointwisely periodic, not just the flow periodic, but pointwisely periodic. This is what happens, in fact, that we can prove it. Uh, hence, the problem now is if there is this kind of limit fluid exists or not. My problem that I will talk about is the existence or not of this limit fluid. The second problem that I have solved is to prove that the fluid in general is the Leres problem. The fluid in general here tends to this uh, this. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, this uh, final uh, 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 poison flux, but here is it, this poison flux exists. A second thing is to prove that if we have a reservoir water and so on, at, at long distance the convergence uh, we have convergence. That uh, is another problem. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Uh, so, as I said before, we first problem for the existence of fully developed flows. I call it positive flows in any case. In infinite tubes, because we have no more, we have just the existence in an infinite tube from minus infinity. Z, Z is, is the, the, the X1, Xn plus X3, the, the third component, longitudinal component. In, co in, in correspondence to a, in any given T periodic real function GT, we have a full developed flow, if yes or not. And for a long time, solutions were not many in particular cases. For instance, warm slave, warm slave flow and other flow, flows like that. And now let, let me say something, because the problem is not, it's not a problem for, uh, for periodic flows, looking for periodic flows when you have a fixed point between the initial data and final data. It's not problem here is quite different from this. And I, I will try to explain that is really different. So I have to, to talk about something. Uh, for instance, I turn back to, to some uh, Galdi's, contrib uh, Galdi's uh, contribution or opinions. In a, in a contribution, uh, Galdi wrote in that uh, the flow of a viscous liquid in an unbound piping system under a given time period, the flow rate has been, I said, discovered only in 2005, thanks to, to uh, this reference three, 
in architectural mechanics. And now I call it this paper, I call it ARMA. I will refer to this paper as ARMA paper. And uh, okay, no, 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 ah, yeah, yeah, I did something wrong. Yeah, no, uh, 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 no, why this? I, 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 I touch here, it, it, it reminds fixed. No, ah, oh, thank you. Uh, it go okay. Okay. It, it, according to, to Galdian uh, Post is another paper. They said there were two ways of determining a positive periodic flow. Namely, or by prescribing either the axial pressure gradient gamma or the flow rate. And they said in the first event, the problem reduces to solving a heat equation with the prescribed time periodic force in term gamma. And so its solution becomes a simple exercise becomes a simple exercise because it's well known, but it was not at all times a simple exercise, but no, it is. Uh, okay. If conversely, we prescribe G, the, the flow, the periodic flow, uh, uh, total flow, then the problem becomes complicated. A fact that was emphasized and detailed in this paper, who showed that problem about determining V and gamma can be reduced to solving a non-standard parabolic equations involving a non-local term of solution. And this is the, the problem here. Okay, moreover, it is shown that this equation is only one solution for more intense applications to the red problem. Okay, it's not so important. No, and, and I say here, actual our proofs have not to do with typical proofs of existence of temporary solutions by appealing to fixed point of a map from a from a variable initial data to value of corresponding solution at time t. This is important because just to be, uh, that was, has been some confusion about that. Okay, but let's go to the problem. Uh, it is also, I must say that uh, Galdi and Robertson, they simplified my proof in the IMS paper by introducing a, a significant relationship between flow rate and axial pressure gradient, I must say this, which depends only on crochet. This is an interesting extension. They, they did. Now let's go to the pro, to the mathematical problem. Okay, all right. Let's pass to the, I, I know what I, I do know. This is an old paper in 2005. Now I extend this, uh, this situation to pipes of varying cross section, something that happens many times. And in fact, as emphasized always by Galdi and Robertson, generalized positive flows are also important in study of motions in bent, bent pipes, or in pipes with a variable cross section, <clears throat> which appears in many, many real, uh, real life problems. And in collaboration with Jackie Young, is from the Xi'an University, we have extended the both result to space periodic pipes by proving the existence of fully developed solutions that simultaneously exhibit temporal and spatial periodicity. It will appear in Journal of Mathematical Physics. Temporal, temporal is, is the temporal periodic is that of G, the T of the, the flow, the, the total flow, given total flow, G, T. And spatial periodic is that of the, 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 the pipe. The pipe has spatial periodicity and solution we sh should have it too. Okay. The general, as a general architecture of our proof is rather complex. So I present just a sketch of general structure of the proof. I would like to, to, to touch some, some more important points of, of obstacles, but I don't know if I will have time or not. Maybe uh, accelerate, I will have too much time. Okay. S uh, lambda is uh, the uh, n plus one dimensional, uh, say n equal two, if you want, n equal two, is a three dimensional infinite pipe. And I call the last, you see zeta is the, the, the x n plus one, is this the, the longitudinal, which is completely uh, different from the other hint. I call the x n plus one, I call it zeta, the longitudinal direction. Oh, it's not necessary, okay. This is a simplified solution. The, 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 it's not necessary that zeta axis is inside because the tube, the tube can do things like that down and, here and here and here can do uh, other things that 
is not necessary that the z axis is inside. It is necessary in a certain, uh, roughly speaking, that the tube develops in the z direction in a certain sense. It cannot turn back, cannot do things like that here, and then it, it turns back and so on. No, this cannot do. It has to go always in the same direction. Hence, uh, lambda is the infinite tube. Sigma zeta is the section at level at level at level at level zeta. This hence depends on the first uh, x coordinates, the octagonal cross section. Uh, I denote lambda zero l. You see uh, one uh, 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 reference pipe element. You see the the pipe has elements that are all equal. And I take one of them just to do as the, the reference pipe element. I, I, may, I, may start from, I may start from a number from A, arbitrary real number A to A plus L is the same thing. It's not necessary starting here. I can start here, here, and end here. It's not necessary. This is useful because, uh, the, uh, okay. And I note by a, a S0, L is lateral boundary of, of lambda zero. L. Lambda zero. Of, uh, this year. Uh, uh, norms, and it is, oh, this is useful because clearly norms and scalar products and other quantities of Z periodic functions in lambda are defined here, here in the, in, in the pipe. You say L2 norm of a global solution in all the pipe, the L2 norm is, uh, the L2 norm is, is uh, the integral in L2 integral here in this, this, in this, in this uh, section here. Uh, and we look for solutions V in X, Z, and T with the time periodic total flux GT. Okay, that should be simultaneously T periodic with respect to time uh, and M periodic with respect to zeta. I, I, I set T equal to 2 pi because I use, I will use a series, a Fourier series, it is convenient to have T uh, that way. Okay, this is not important because all functions I will talk about, if they depend on time, they are in space of functions that are T time period, periodic. It's this symbol in a certain sense is not necessary. And this lower symbol means L space periodicity, the same, same, same thing. All the functional spaces, uh, functions will be L space periodic. Since I, I can even avoid these symbols, but I, I, I leave it. Uh, okay, here are the usual things. Uh, this is scalar product in L2 in space. Here is the L2 norm, square of the L2 norm. This is the norm in H1, H1 zero, zero, zero on the on the, lat on the, on the boundary of the tube because in the Z direction we have periodicity. The zero is just on the tube. In Z direction, solution is periodic, space periodic. Okay, we use the space, the usual Helmholtz decomposition, say H, this H, capital H, strange, is the source in L2 divergence, zero tangent to the boundary, and uh, I, I'd call V the same space when functions are zero on the boundary, uh, and are in H1 instead of just in L2, and the norm in V is the norm in H1 is the same, and uh, okay, and I denote v, v2 as the functions in, in this space, v, which are h2, h2, when they are also more, uh, more regular. And we look, ah, uh, no, uh, I turn back, I think, yes. I, I denote by, yes, by p, the usual projection from, L, autograph projection from L2 into, into h. Okay, these are, uh, I am following things very, very, uh, no, this is here, yes. And the result for the stocks, here I have not written Navier stocks, I wrote stocks. Let T be a, a, a periodic function G given, then there is a, I prove that there is a, we prove that there is a unique solution V, the spell two version H1 of double periodic evolution, Stokes problem, which is here is the equation, divergence zero, V equals zero on lateral boundary, and flux is uh, in at, it, at each uh, 
uh, is equal to at time t always equal to gt, which is periodic. I, I, I might put here an f at the end. I put here, I need to put here an f, and the results are two with an f, which is uh, time periodic, etc. This is the, is the same. As I said here, the results hold under suitable t periodic standard forces. Okay. Uh, but here's important remark. In the case of pipes with a fixed section, with in the Armas paper, the paper 2005 uh, paper, solution of the Stokes problem still solves Navier Stokes problem. In solution of the Stokes, and here I talk about, you see, I, uh, I talk about Stokes problem, periodic evolution Stokes, not Navier Stokes. But in, in, in the, in the, in the, in the pipe with a constant section uh, is the same thing. Clearly, this situation is no more true if the section depends on zeta. But main point is the following. It is very important. However, the proof still lies in study of Stokes problem. The extension from Stokes to Navier-Stokes equation is obtained by a classical fixed point argument that is trivial. Hence, the main problem appears in study of the Stokes problem. Clearly, Passing to the stocks, to Navier stocks, the only problem, but I don't go inside this, but is the problem. Uh, let's 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 give it to you. We have we we solve uh, we need a smallness assumption on the, on G on the norm of the of the flu, uh, given flux, the given total flux. Is this necessary? Is it not necessary? I must say that. I didn't. I didn't try to study. I may try to do it. Maybe if some young people would like to do it, because in general, for Navier stocks, we need some smallness assumption. Assumption if we want to have strong solutions and solutions and so on. We know here since this is a, after seeing that this is a particular kind of, of solution. Maybe we may prove something a little better. For instance, that we have. For energy, we have at least one solution, but maybe not unique, and hence uh, could be something like that. I don't, this I don't know, but could be like that. I presume maybe we have a solution in like one solutions, but have to choose the good one and so on, but I, I don't know. It's just, uh, just an open problem. No, let's stop, let's not go to the proof. The proof is based, uh, uh, important thing is the stocks stationary problem. It's, I consider the stocks stationary problem. He's always rare. It's just stocks problem in, 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 in a periodic tube, which is zero on the lateral boundary and periodic in the other direction. And the results are just well known as for the usual stocks problem with zero date on boundary. You don't, we have no flux here, you know, nothing about flux. We have no time here. It's space. I, I write the, the it is a equation in this abstract form. Uh, AH is an isomorphism between solutions in H2 and space of the data F in H. Maybe uh, the Stokes operator is better to call a H minus one that go from H to uh, two, but it's important that this is isomorphism between solutions and, and even data. But maybe it's better to call Stokes operator a H minus one. It's not important. Position given F in H, there is a unique solution V in V2 of lab S space periodic stocks form in, in this abstract formulation. This is well, nothing new here. Let's accept this. Uh, no, it's here. Okay, no. Uh, uh, a first important result is the seed falling. A pressure structure result, a proved falling. If the double periodic evolution stocks problem is, if we have a solution, that necessarily the pollution, the pressure must have this form here. This is important. If we have solution, pressure must be like that. Hence, I may assume the obvious that pressure, if I want to solve the problem, have this, this, this particular expression here, which is very important to go on. Otherwise, it would be things. We know that pressure must be like that. And I always put this pressure inside my equation to see what happens. And by appealing to the to the to the to all the equations, I have to appeal to the main equation, to divergence free equation, to zero boundaries data, to all to all these things. Uh, we prove that uh, we can write the first equation, the main equation in, in the Stokes evolution problem, but I use also the other equations 
and to improve using this that the, uh, the equation can be reduced to this where p tilde is as here I said a zeta periodic function and phi of t is uh, this function here an arbitrary function of time is and here e zeta is a very important vector is the the unit vector in zeta the unit vector in direction of zeta this is the gradient of zeta okay uh, Next, I cannot show the proofs is along and so on. We can, we are able to eliminate this unknown field of T with many tricks and things like that is impossible to explain this here. And the equations may be written this form. Recall, here in the more abstract form. DVDT or AIAH is what I call the stocks operator. Here we have this term here. E is this important vector I said before. Ah, no, uh, E, excuse me is the projection from L2 into H, the H space of divergent free vectors and so on, normalized. This vector is very important. Projection of the unit vector uh, in Z reaction onto H and normalized. And we can write the equation, can write just in equivalent form here. We have here GT, which this, this is the, the flux at time T, at this time T is given by GT. And here is derivative of G, appears here, derivative of G, because derivation is respect of time. Note that here, if a H of V, this has a H of V equal to E, E is given in, uh, E is an element in H, means there is a solution W of problem A H V equal to E. If I put this W here, this becomes a H W becomes equal to E, E times E is one. And, uh, and here I have a new, no, A H V equal uh, E is E, this appears E. Here A H W is E, this term disappears and I lose the elliptic coerciveness uh, phase. In this is a problem that we have not coerciveness. We may have not coerciveness here in the problem. Okay. A very important result here is that vector E is in H, the H, H strange H, but it's not in V, it's not H1. This fact is very important. If A be, would belong to, uh, belong to V, my proof would not work. This point here is crucial. And we may see physically why, more or less, more or less. Uh, OK. In fact, define W as the element in domain of a H that solves the stock problem with data E. This data E is very particular data, record, and this is the unit. Is the, uh, and uh, W has important, it's given. We know E, and then we know Omega uh, W. We know means is well characterized. We know I don't have it here, but in the end. Okay. And we look for solutions of our problem in the in the at this form. We look for solutions V such that uh, in Fourier series, in Fourier series, where the coefficients are elements of domain of a H, uh, domain of H, uh, H. Uh, domain of uh, H, hints, which is v V2, solutions in H2 and so on. Hints, if I look for these things here, are vectors in domain of uh, H. And I look for, I have to look for this thing, for this thing. The data G is developed also in, in, in Fourier cells, but here I know P0, PK, and UK are known because GT is given, since I have this. Okay. Now I, I replace in equations, in our equations say, uh, in a, I replace, uh, uh, where is this? I replace, no, 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 no. I replace these expressions here in the main equation, in the main equation. And clearly due to the orthogonality of between cosinus and sinus, between cosinus with K distinct K, we obtain infinite sequence of systems, uh, uh, which is that written here. Given for each K, we have a sequence. We have a, a problem like here, 
on right hand side we have the exponent the k that comes from comes from from p okay and he has also free term is this is coming from the, the the term without without cosinus and sinus i will not this this is important too but i will not i will don't think about that otherwise i have not no time to arrive to the end and we prove that this last last equation implies that at zero must have this form for some constant C tilde. And at the end, I prove that this constant C tilde must is unique determined and so on. But I, I, I will skip this. I, I like this proof here, but I will skip this completely. Oh, but note that this, this C, I have to solve this system, but all these systems are the same in a certain sense. We have, if I, this B, the difference is that K, K and PK are different. PK and PK depends on K, but they are always the form is this K V is B, U is A, and the system the, the, the system have all this form. Hence, I have to start to study this system for fixed triads K P and Q. I have K P and Q. I solve this system, then I get. I have this means that I have solved this system for all K, all Q K and P K. And then I take BK, the IK, and KK and PK, the no, BK, IK, and KK, I can put it in, 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 the, in the Fourier series uh, of, uh, in the Fourier series for V, and I get solution V. This is the, is the idea. Okay. Uh, I study. No, the problem is the following. The main, this here is really the main theorem. We so solve this system. I consider the system that I have shown, the, the, the one, the one uh, this year, this year, the general one, say, where K is larger than one, P and Q are fixed real number. This problem has one and only one solution of V. They are in domain of a, a H, these solutions. And moreover, we have this good estimate. The norm of U and V in H2, because this IH2 means norm in H2, is bounded by the constants, by constants connected to Fourier series of G. Note that one times one uh, times P squared Q squared means the norm of G. K squared P squared Q squared means the norm of G prime because when we de de derive the equation with respect to, to, to time, uh, cosinus and sinus give out a K. In this K, is, we have squares here means the norm of G. Hence so we bound this with the, this one means the norm of G, the norm square of G, and this K square P square Q square means the norm of G prime. Okay. The quite long and tricky proof is based on the approximation of the problem because we have not the, the, the we have not the as I have said we have not the 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 coerciveness. Um, it's an approximate problem with a sequence of problems. In increasing finite dimensional spaces VOM, with appeal appealing appealing to a special basis in VOM. Then we assume. Uh, no, I, I okay. I will do that. I will assume the result. This I will assume. I will assume this theorem that this theorem holds. I will say something about this theorem if I have time because this, the main point is here. But I I will just just go to the end. I assume this and. Uh, and as I said, some uh, um, remarks I'll be, uh, I do some remarks about the proof of this result, but now let's assume this result and let's go on. Uh, we look, okay, we look, we are looking for solutions of this type. If I have, no, I, I know I zero, I k and bk for each k, I, I apply a h to v and I obtain. Uh, this AH IK here and here AH BK here. Okay. And here this don't think I have said this okay, but don't, don't think about this. Is, okay. This follows from this, but uh, below I prove that it is uniquely determined, but I don't think no, no, is no the term four applies to each K system three eight and for each K and one has the estimates. Uh, for each k, I get this. We get these estimates applying this this theorem, this global theorem. Say global theorem. Uh, now, by appealing to three eleven, which is the expression here of uh, 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 where is three eleven? It's somewhere here. I take this and to get the norm, the norm of a h v, 
in L2 time with values in space, I made integral of AHV times AHV in space, integral between uh, zero and T, the zero and the t, t, capital T, the, the, the periodic thing. And I use, will use the fact that these elements are orthogonal. These are orthogonal if K is different between them and cosinus are orthogonal to sine of K. K. This simplifies a lot uh, since we have, and this integral here is given by, just be, by the orthogonality uh, is given by this thing, a summation only of the square terms of the integrals that have the same K, the same cosinus and same sinus. Since all the, the, the other things go, things approximated by Fourier series was a good idea. Oh, P, T is to pi, okay. Uh, now we apply the, 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 this estimate, this estimate that we have for AK and BK, I put it, uh, I, I put it here on, on, on the, where is this? Uh, where is this? Oh, uh, I put this estimate here and I get the estimate for the norm of V in L2 and we get this estimate. So, as I said before, the one times pk whose k is, comes here, the k term, k square, is here, and this is the norm of gt, uh, uh, and, uh, and this is norm of g prime multiplied by k is norm of g prime. Hence, we get this main estimate. Norm of v is bounded by norm of g plus norm of g prime. Okay, this is my, from this estimate to obtain estimates for V and uh, other estimates for V coming from this and so on, this, this is the uh, main point. Remarks on the proof of the main theorem. Uh, the Tate theorem that uh, we saw that uh, we have the solution of the main, main system. This is a system where K, P, and Q are fixed. Recall, K, P, and Q were fixed just for each K, each P, and Q we have to solve the problem. We find an increase in sequence of strictly positive real, real eigenvalues of the operator Stokes operator AH. Okay, and uh, these are uh, okay, and these are norm and normalize it, uh, uh, these eigenfunctions in H. In the, for each here, lambda j are eigenvalues is a complete system of eigenfunctions, and this this j functions. And we consider this finite dimensional space spanning, uh, spanning, span, uh, developed uh, by the first M vectors. And you look for M approximate solutions. This was done before proving the main theorem. This is the, is the proof of the main theorem, means we're looking to prove it. Means I approximate solutions, when by uh, combination, uh, you know, uh, alpha J and beta J are, are scalars that I'm looking for them. And I put WM this way, WM in this way, and I take solution of truncated equations. Since I truncated by, you see this phi here, phi is uh, for each element in WM or each element of the basis, W1, WM, I have to, to, to look for solutions of these of this truncated equations. And suitable calculations show that the, the system here, this, is equivalent to, to solve the system here. I, I put things inside, we do that, and we obtain the system. So we have here beta. The beta system is Q, P, and K are given, and unknowns are the betas and the alpha. You see, they are combined because I have beta here and alpha here, alpha here and beta here, okay? And this, uh, uh, this is something, he, he, he is QK and here P is PK, is they are connected with this develop K. I, I forgot here, there is some small mistake. Okay, we interpret, we, I interpret this as a system on a two M dimension column vector, lambda one, lambda M, A, M, lambda one, lambda M, B, M, which are this, these are, and, and I may divide it by, by lambda, but it's better to do like that. This is a vector X. Uh, we set, you see, you see this, this thing here, this matrix here, this matrix, gamma, delta J minus this here. Recall that E and V, are, the W are known. These are clearly connected symbols. This here I, I, I are known in a certain sense. Uh, for, our, for mathematicians, these are known. <laughs> in practice, if I want what they are really writing, I don't know what they are. The E case may, may be better, the other, not so easy. 
eigen, eigen functions. Okay, but they existed, okay. We set this ga ga gamma EJ, the, 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 the elements of this, uh, this matrix here, uh, which is, is a, 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 the, the, the big matrix is 2M dimensional. The small matrix is one, is, is a three, the other C, yeah, is N dimensional. This is 2N dimensional. Okay. The, and we showed following that the two the two the big two M matrix is a system is positive definite if and only if is positive definite this matrix the matrix this matrix here it's, we have to show that this matrix is is positive definite and here is the following no uh, if we make this color with a, a, a unit vector say unit vector scenario or see unit vector as you want. This thing is this plus this. This here is we separate Xj Ej from Xl El, and this gives uh, the norm. Uh, gives the first components of E. This components of E. It gives the norms of uh, this E. This vector, and we get this. You see, we have perceivedness if E is different from one because if E has is complete, the norm will be one. And this is zero, and we lose the cohesiveness. Now, what happens here? Happens that E, recall, E does not belong to VM is very important. If E does not belong to VM, E is smaller than one, and we have cohesiveness. But we have proved that E does not belong to V. I have said it's very important. Since E is not, does not belong to V, does not belong to VM, which is smaller, is a subset. Uh, since E is equal to one, the norm of E is smaller, smaller than one. Hence we have, uh, this system is coercive and we may have uh, admit, admit our problem below uh, has one intolerance solution, the approximate problem. Uh, okay, okay, I said I have just a series. No multiplication by M and so on and so on. We obtain this estimate. Uh, we just we, we put inside the equation and we obtain this estimate for the norm. I, I am this what means this is the H2 norm of WM. This is IHV in L2 is the H2 norm of WM. And we get I get this estimate to do calculate. And this is apparently bad because assume this is here physically important. If AHWM has the direction of E. A edge when E is the is a edge, uh, uh, this will be a n square. The norm of a edge a edge when square is will be this, and this here will be this. Hence, this will be two times. This here is two times this, and his this give nothing. We have to know to sfutar. I don't know how I say this in, in, in English. The fact that a edge when the AHUM don't like to be <laughs> have too much direction of E, and this is very delicate. It's not orthogonal. I, I don't think it's orthogonal, but it, it is quite more or less orthogonal. We have, this is point. And we have to use this to go on and show that uh, exploring the peculiarities of vector E and of solutions here, that this is not so bad, and we may, we may really obtain uh, the estimate, an estimate we want. Uh, this this uh, important, this, this aspect here, this physical sense, because if solution, if solution always try to go just in the direction of the tube, it's very difficult to obtain something uh, periodic in space if they, they is too strong in the tube direction. It's they want to be like that in a certain sense. It's not sufficient that they want to be, but in fact, we understand that this could happen. Okay. Then we prove this estimate. We see, uh, okay. Uh, we prove the, the main estimate, which is just the estimate, main estimate with the final solution replaced by the approximate, approximate, uh, by the approximate uh, solutions. Now we have an estimate for, from this estimate by compactness. We have weak convergence of solutions in, 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 in convergence of solutions of the pair when to some things, to some solution, I don't know, to something UV. 
we prove that this limit thing, limit is solution of the problem, but we don't have uniqueness because we don't have this coerciveness. The uniqueness will be proved by hands, say, by hands. Uh, oh, no. To end the pool, ah, we might show that the constant C tilde have some form well known, which is given by this. I don't insist on that. And last step, we see the improving uniqueness of the solution. In, and this is proved by a specific direct proof. Uh, if you ask me now how I do the obtain the uniqueness in this moment, I don't remember the calculations. You wrote me uh, 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 an email, and I will send you the proof. But if you ask me now the proof, I don't, I don't have it in mind now. Okay, and I'm quite confused about all this system to do things in that terrible way. Ah, concerning extension, nervous talks is very easy. We 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 solve the same problem with an external force F. This is easy. We get the estimates, the strong estimates for F, like before, and we put in, instead of the F, we put uh, a data. W, uh, this nonlinear term instead of F. This is not a question of periodicity here. It's in global space L2, zero T in time, time. values in space. We put this instead of F, we take the solution V, and we have, uh, we, we prove that there is a fixed point by the usual uh, technique, uh, compactness technique, but fixed point. This is, and we prove the existence of, of the solution um, when for, by getting, going from to from stocks to navy stocks, but this is this is easy. The problem is the stocks problem. Okay. Or okay. proving you that. Tell me, you are just entering in lunching time, so please be brief. Oh, we, okay. I, I I just I finished. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, I must I I I might say that but you talk about an open problem and things like that. But if someone is interested. Mm, mm, just just one one of my uh, maybe is, could be interesting. I, I, uh, if I have a tube like that, which uh, assume I applied my 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 solution to this problem. This problem has an air space periodicity. We go from from here to here, and we have a space periodicity. Hence, I get a solution, as I said, space periodicity. But you see that this tube has always, if instead of zeta zeta variable. Uh, given here, this zeta variable like that. The zeta variable is given here, here inside the tube. Then maybe I, I then I may get a much better result where the solution does not the, the solution at any level at any time is as for the for the rectilinear tube is just constant in a, each time is the same situation. Do like something like that. Uh, let me put my hands. Like that, in any point, it do like that. The same at, in any instant. As for, and I think here, if you do uh, some geometry and work, we can do that. I think that I, I, I okay, I finish here. Uh, many thanks to to you and to, um, okay. Uh, and I must say to just to to save again, uh, dear in Italian, carissimo amico, I send to you. Uh, Ti envio un forte abbraccio da Pisa e tanti auguri. And thank you to all of you for your patience. And thanks to my colleague, uh, Massimo Gobino, that is here sitting down near me in Norway if something would be necessary to help me. Okay. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you, Hugo. And now, uh, even you're in, inside lunchtime, I think it's time to put some questions to Hugo. So who wants to ask? Okay, oh, Constantinus, Pilaskus, Constantinus. Yeah, uh, uh, first of all, I want to, to thank Hugo for a very nice talk and very nice result. And I have some remarks. So the, I think that the first paper for the stationary nonlinear navier stokes equations uh, with prescribed flux in, in, in the periodic pipe was done by Lev Kapitansky in the beginning of 80s, and he proved the uh, existence of the solution for arbitrary flux. Yeah, so this is a, but is the the part the in, in the in the full uh, in the full uh, pipe. pipe? Yeah, for stationary for stationary. Uh, ah, not, ah, stationary. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, then I want to also to mention 
Uh, so the paper, my joint paper with, uh, of uh, 2017 with my former PhD student, uh, uh, Clovenia, with um, here. Shippo and Zuba. Ah, it's here, yeah? So I know, I know it, I know it. Okay, and um, uh, I want to say <coughs> some remarks about the terminology, which is called the rare problem in the literature. And I also many times called it the rare problem, but <coughs> now I think it's not exactly correct because it comes from the paper of Emic, where he said that this problem appears in the paper of Ladizhenskaya after she came from Paris. And so he decided that it was formulated to her by Lerre. But I never heard from Ladizhenskaya. She was say, saying about this problem in her lectures also, but I never heard that it was formulated by Lerre. Ah, I call, uh, so I think it's better to call it maybe Ladizhenskaya Lerre problem or Lerre Ladizhenskaya problem. Okay, okay. It, because it's- uh, I am I am not, in this moment, I really I am not able to-, to, yeah. to... Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I must say that I I, I have seen, uh, unfortunately, I will not able to follow the your talk tomorrow. But but Constantine, I yeah. will invite you to come here to Pisa and another invitation I do to, to you, but I cannot not speak about that to a conference okay. that, that someone will organize and so on. I will invite you and I would like that you come here and I would like to have some ideas to where I would like to have you here and to discuss. If you have patience to discuss with someone that you know, start becoming a little old to, <laughs> to thinking too much in deep, but I would like to discuss with you and I will invite you to come here and please send me the, the if you have a paper, your talk that we give tomorrow, if you still have a paper, send it to me. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's not everything what I will uh, say is public, uh, but uh, some part is public. Okay, send it to me. me. I would like to have you here in peace, okay? Okay, okay, That's okay. Yeah. So I have, uh, uh, there is another question by Antonio Fasano. Please, Antonio. Yes, very short. Oh, time. ciao, Antonio. Antonio. Just to say, just to say ciao to Hugo. Ciao, me too, and yes. I... Congratulate for, for this nice talk you gave. I am okay. happy to see you, Antonio. I, I have a, ve a very short question. Oh, yes. Can you attach any physical meaning to the fact that the, the norm of E is less than one? Ah. Uh, the norm of E? Less than one, which is a crucial. Uh, point yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I, 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 yeah. Ah, okay. The reason that the, 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 the fluid don't like this direction is clear. The reason why the norm of E is smaller is not regular. Ah, why this vector is not regular? Something like that. This is a curious question, but I I I, I am not able to 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 in this moment, at least I am not table why the vector is not regular, the gradient of C uh, is tangent to, could be tangent to, to the boundary, but the, the E is projection, because the E, the, the, the gradient of zeta clearly it is not, it is, it is not zero on the boundary and so on, but the, the projection, oh, I don't know, really, I don't okay. know. Don't mind, don't mind. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, now I have a last question from uh, Professor Vladislav Kudnachov. Yes. Representative, I have more question. Please. It's possible. I have the word, yeah. Please ask. Okay. Thank you for very interesting talk. And my question relates to stability. I think we are with not very good. Sorry? Yeah. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. 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 Something with uh, the connection. Yes. May yes. I? Oh. Vladislav. No, no, Vladislav. Put a chop. Send me. If you are, if some happens, send me 
uh, an email and I, I will try to reply or maybe it's a, a nice discussion we can we can start a nice discussion about some problem it's okay okay Hugo, that's all I mean it, it, we, we lost him we lost professor Pugnacho. okay we lost him so I think the question is empty there is no more questions so we thank you for your nice talk and okay. uh, and uh, bon appetito in English we uh, say bon well, appetit. good lunch for uh, for you good dinner yeah. for uh, people 